How did Dave Grohl approach you with regards to Sonic Highways? How did that come together? Oh, that was so strange because, um, you know, um, I had uh, got a phone call from, I, I think it was Gold Mountain. Or maybe it was uh, John Selva. I got a call from them on my answer phone. So I called them back and I asked them, like, well, what's up? And they said, well, we just wanted to hire a studio. They were asking me, like, uh, what I had going on, like, in months to come. And so they kind of planted the seed, and I, you know, I was like, oh, well, that's cool. A friend of mine, Marcel Fernandez, um, came come up from Caracas, Venezuela. Marcel was a totally different person. He, uh, he was uh, Latin American. He was very musical, but he was a genius at... Uh, you know, engineering, uh, knowing how to hook up studios, knowing all kinds of stuff. But here's the magic about this. A couple months later, right, I'm going to meet up with Marcel down in Puerto Vallarta. And so I get down there uh, to our development. And uh, that night uh, when I got down there, Marcel was flying in from Caracas to, via Houston, Houston to Puerto Vallarta. And so... I ended up picking him up at the airport and his biggest dream in the world was to work with the Foo Fighters. That was his ultimate goal. And so really cool thing happened is that when I picked him up at the airport, I could feel some kind of like magical stuff happening. When I picked him up, he got in the car. I had a little Volkswagen and, and so I picked him up and we went out to Punta de Mita you know, had a couple of drinks and had some food, went back to the place where I was staying right next to my development there. And uh, about 12.30 at night, Marcel was crashed out, was smoking, you know, the La, La Mota, you know. He was, <laughs> he was pretty well, you know, he was out of it. And so about 12.30, I'm checking my emails, and here's a personal email from Dave Grohl. I went into Marcel into the bedroom and started kicking him, you know. Hey, hey, fucking get up, get up, get the fuck up, go boom, you know, get up. And so it was it was ironic because he's going, what the fuck, man? You know, he's got the hair you know, all over his face. And I go, you've got to read this email. It was from Dave, a personal email from him. And talking about Sonic Highways, and he wanted to know, he goes, hey, you know, hey, Bobby, are you in with this? I said, I looked at Marcel and I went, read this. I go, you're going to be the guy with Justin Armstrong. You're going to, you two are going to be my engineers. Tape up, Batch Bay, uh, you know, working with Butch Big and, and John, uh, Butch's uh, engineer at that time. So it was all kind of written in stone. Marcel just had tears running down his eyes. I mean, that's all that's I could so say. Cool, yeah, yeah. So that's I made awesome. that, we made that happen. Marcel kicked ass and, and uh, hooked up. Uh, you know, him and his wife, you know, they, they came here, they did a whole bunch of soldering. I mean, we had to run like two Studer A27s in sync. It was like making sure everything was going to be flawless, all new, like carpet, uh, you know, purple cloth, like, you know, behind what you're there. And all this shit, you know, I mean, you know, to make that session come perfect. And, uh, yeah, the only, the only thing that, the, the only thing that I regret is that, is that you know what what happened is is that uh, about three weeks before the Sonic Highways happened that weekend it was Memorial Day weekend and I had the Voice coming in here doing uh, uh, auditions so Memorial Day Monday was the only day off but so what happened three weeks prior to that one of my interns went to turn the plasma display on and I said well you got to be careful because it's two hundred and sixty volts. So don't get your hand caught in there. So what does the dumbass do? He fetches an, an arc welding glove, right? In, in my room out here, you know, in the in the back cave, right? Gets an arc welding glove and sticks it in there, shorts everything out. My whole plasma display went up in smoke. And I'm thinking, oh, no, I'm going to be tested now. And the hell if I've got enough money to pay Phil Nicolay, the SSL tech, to come in and do this. I'm going to do this myself and figure it out. Although I did bring Phil in for the last two days to put all new fans in. I put a new air conditioner in. I made it just in time on Saturday morning. I remember 7 in the morning, I was at a point of like, I couldn't go any farther. I had a couple bolts and nuts that I needed at the very end of the armrest, or the armrest for the council. And I just said, oh, I just kind of like 
sloughed it off. I go, well, it's a little loose, but it'd be cool. So <laughs> when, when Dave Grohl and when Taylor Hawkins were having their drum set set up, it was like all of a sudden, you know, I mean, they, they were clicking. I mean, they, they were like, you know, going through a little bit of like rehearsal and stuff. And there's some things exchanged, you know, but they were like, they nailed it together. And Dave was so happy. He just, he comes in and he goes, he goes, fucking yes, man, this fucking rocks. And he hits my counsel. And the <laughs> went <laughs> on the floor. And I just went, oh, shit. That's because I was so freaking burned out before the boys came in. I had no energy left. I mean, it was almost at a drooling point. You know what I mean? So it was like two and a half days, no sleep. Trying to get everything perfect. And I did outside the armrest. So anyhow. But that that was, it was kind of like a crazy, uh, crazy time. But hey, most important is that, you know, we got through what we needed to get through. So, yeah. Well, I was so honored to have the Foos, you know, come here and, and do episode seven, Sonic Highways. But when they got here, something was changed. And so, you know, Dave decided uh, to write this song um, called Subterranean. And a lot of the lyrics in that song pertain to, of course, a little bit of Curb, a little bit of what Dave was going through, and a little bit of this place. And what he put in there, because I previously... Years ago, I gave him a couple prints of this crazy marble stone that I've got. And he somehow took that in consideration when he was here. And he put in the lyrics, you know, uh, poisonous sound, God in a stone. And those lyrics are back here on my back right over here. I've got the actually his handwritten lyrics. So, you know, it's like this place has got a lot of like mystical, magical stuff that, that goes with it goes with the territory. I walked in when Dave was doing vocals for Subterranean, which was very chilling. I had these goosebumps come up my neck and back. It was like, it was unbelievable. I wasn't down for that session too much. It was only when it was at the end, I stay out of the sessions. I don't like going down there. I mean, people, hey, where's Robert? You know, well, you know, I'm up here doing other stuff. So I'm not like, like I'm not assisting. I'm not, you know, um, you know, I'm not really hanging out in the control room. So, uh, but I did observe that, you know, those guys were there doing drums and then doing the duel. They had a drum set in the larger vocal booth and then the other drums were set out in the studio room. So it was, it was quite amazing. That's so cool. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what you see, make sure to subscribe for more. All the videos on this channel are original. I'm the one conducting all the interviews and editing all the videos together. So if you guys like what you see and you want to support, the best way to do so is honestly just to subscribe. Lots more to come.